Good morning and welcome to A Pearl in Every Cow's Lips Ear. Yesterday my students did a quiz and didn't do so well on it. They passed, they did okay, okay, but as I looked over their work, it was obvious that they had been just guessing on some of the questions and they weren't really sure how to find adjectives. They weren't really sure what a predicate nominative was. So I prepared a bit of a cheat sheet that I'd like to share with you this morning. And I had my students copy this exactly as I put it on the board, onto a piece of paper for themselves. And my hope was that they can use this as kind of a cheat sheet, as kind of a summary or a nutshell of what we're talking about here in language arts in the beginning. So let's get into it. Nouns. Nouns. Name a person, place, thing, or idea. Nouns name a person, place, thing, or idea. And they can be used in the sentences as, used as subjects, predicate nominatives, direct objects, indirect objects, and objects of the preposition. So a noun is a word that names a person, place, thing, or idea, and can be used as a subject, predicate nominative, direct object, indirect object, or object of a preposition. Pronouns. Take the place of nouns. And obviously, they can be used in the very same places anywhere a noun can be. Um, sometimes pronouns could be adjectives. If it's a possessive pronoun, it's often an adjective. But in general, a pronoun takes the place of a noun. Verbs. Shows action or being. Verb shows action of being. Verbs are generally pretty easy to find in sentences and not that, uh, not that difficult to understand what they're doing, what they are. Adjectives. Modify nouns or pronouns. And they answer the questions, they tell, tells which, whose, how many, or what kind of adjectives answer the uh, modified nouns or pronouns, and they tell which, whose, how many, or what kind of, and then adverbs. Adverbs modify verbs, adjectives, or even other adverbs. And they tell how, when, where, and to what extent. Okay, so if you can get these five parts of speech in your head, nouns, pronouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs, and you know quickly that an adverb is something that modifies a verb, and adjectives modify noun and pronouns. If it's telling how, when, or where, to what degree, it's an adverb. Um, if you can get these things stuck in your head very solidly, you're gonna be a long ways when it comes to diagramming. You're gonna be a, a big help. And if you can have a piece of paper with this listed on it, it might be a help to get these things um, riveted in your brain. Now, I'm going to erase this and we're going to uh, talk about sentence parts. Now, diagramming can often be a bit of a bear for students. Uh, got a student this year that thinks he doesn't know how to diagram. He does. He just thinks he doesn't know how. And something about putting words on sticks is just scary. Uh, it's not. It's very easy. It makes a lot of sense. But we need to talk about some compliments. Uh, we're going to talk about direct objects, indirect objects, predicate nominatives, and predicate adjectives. A direct object 
follows an action verb. Very important. Follows an action verb and receives the action. Okay, if you have an action verb in the sentence, you can have a direct object. It follows an action verb and receives the action and is diagrammed this way. And here's a little kernel sentence diagram. Subject, action verb, direct object. And if you want a little kernel sentence that shows the direct object, here's the kernel sentence I use and will always use, I believe. And that is, mother, uh, I'm going to put it right underneath. Mother baked a pie. The pie receives the action of being baked. Mother baked a pie. Now, indirect objects are quite similar. An indirect object comes between an action verb and a direct object. An indirect object comes between an action verb and a direct object and tells for whom or to whom. Tells for whom or to whom. And the little kernel diagram for that in a sentence, to diagram, to diagram it, it will look like this. Subject, action, verb, direct object, and then down here will be the indirect object. Subject, action, verb, direct object, and indirect object. And if you want a little kernel sentence for that one, we have mother baked a pie for the direct object, for the indirect object. Mother baked me a pie. Okay, mother baked a pie, pie receives the action of being baked, but me is, is receiving that direct object then. It's kind of like receiving what was receiving the action. So me, the indirect object, receives the direct object. It receives the, the actual action indirectly. I was not baked. The pie was baked. Mother baked me a pie. I was not baked. The pie was baked. But I received that baked pie. I'm the, the indirect object. All right. Uh, predicate adjective follows a linking verb. And modifies the subject. Modifies my yes. And modifies the subject. Predicate adjective follows the linking verb and modifies the subject. And here's how that is diagrammed. Subject. Linking verb. Okay? If you see an action verb, it's gonna have a direct object as a complement. If you see a linking verb, it's going to have a predicate adjective, a predicate nominative. Subject, linking verb, and then a slanted line here, and then your predicate adjective out here. And for our kernel sentence for that, Solomon was wise. Solomon was wise. Okay? Wise is an adjective describing Solomon. Predicate adjectives will always be adjectives. and follow a linking verb, they modify the subject. Remember that subject will always be a noun. Therefore, the predicate adjective will always be an adjective. It's right in the name. Not too hard to remember. And then predicate nominative. Follows a linking verb and renames the subject. Follows a linking verb and renames the subject. Renames nominative, predicate nominative. You, um, lower grades have called these things predicate nouns, actually. But it follows a linking verb and renames the subject. It's diagrammed the same way a predicate adjective is diagrammed. Subject, linking verb, slanted line, saying, let's Rename the subject, just like this is saying, let's modify the subject. This is saying, we'll rename the subject here with a predicate nominative. 
And the kernel sentence for that is Solomon was a king. Of course, we'll have our A down here, just like we had our A. Your mother baked me a pie. Solomon was a king. King is a noun. It's renaming Solomon. A king was Solomon. These things can generally be switched around and said, said in the opposite order, and they still make perfect sense for us. Okay, I would highly recommend getting this strongly in your head when you're just starting into language arts, especially when you are in mm, even fifth grade is soon enough. Sixth, seventh for sure. Get this solidly in your head. You're gonna, it's gonna help you with the diagrams. And if you can diagram a little one, you can diagram a big one. If you know how to find a predicate adjective, how to find a direct object, then all those extra adjectives and adverbs and prepositional phrases that they throw into the sentences that you're giving won't be a problem because you'll know to find the verb and then ask who or what to find the direct object. And if it's a linking verb, you're looking for a predicate adjective or a predicate nominative. If it's an action verb, you're looking for a direct object. If you have a direct object, you can begin to look for an indirect object. Okay, I hope that's a help.